Being able to create database indexes are powerful feature to improve the speed of data retrieval and to speed querying. However, same type of indexes might not be suitable for all types of workload like transactional workload versus analytical workload. I am Arshadali and in this video, in the context of Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool, I am going to walk you through column store index, how it accelerates performance of analytical queries and what are best practices and consideration when using this feature. When it comes to indexing option in dedicated SQL pool, this can be broadly categorized into two categories, row store indexes and column store indexes. In row store index, data for all the columns for a given row are stored together on, a, on the same page. This kind of arrangement is good or best for selective queries or transactional workload where you select one or few rows most of the time and you need all the all the all the data for that given row for column store index data for a given column are stored together on a single page this type of arrangement works best for analytical workload in which where you query large volume of data or large number of rows but only select few of those columns from that table Column store index is not unique to SQL pool and is available in SQL family of product and services like SQL Server, Azure SQL DB, Azure SQL MI. In fact, the concept of storing data into columnar fashion to optimize analytical workload queries is available in other technologies as well. For example, if you are coming from Apache Spark background, you can relate it with Parquet file format. If you are coming from Apache Hive background, you might relate it with ORC, Optimized Row Columnar File Format. With the internal storage architecture of columnar storage, as we just discussed, the query performance is improved several folds over traditional row oriented storage. Now, you must be wondering, how come a different physical layout representation of the same data, storing same data in a columnar format instead of traditional row-wise format can improve the performance several times? There are a couple of reasons for that. And the very first one is, with columnar storage, SQL engine transfer only needed data from disk to memory and to CPU. For example, if you are querying a fact table where you have 50 columns and you are only querying some of the surrogate key to join it with the dimension table and some of the numerical column to do the aggregation on top of it, in this case you are only being selective in terms of the number of columns that you are selecting. Think of a scenario where you have 50 columns in a table and you are selecting only 10 of those, those, those columns. So it means during execution, SQL engine can eliminate 80% of data read to process and serve your query. The second reason is SQL engine uses compression aggressively, aggressively to reduce the amount of storage space needed to store same set of data. This is possible because for a given column, the values are likely to be highly repeatable and because of this redundancy, Higher, there is a higher chances for better comparison. And third reason is SQL engine has new batch mode processing operator which processes column store index data one batch of rows at a time instead of a row at a time. This new operator is optimized for multi-core CPUs and increased memory throughput of modern hardware architecture. And when used with column store indexes, improves query performance typically by two to four times. Before we deep dive into column store index, let's quickly look at row store index options we have available with dedicated SQL pool. And the very first option is creating a table as a heap. A heap is a table without cluster index. Since 
there is no cluster index there is no permanent logical order for storing the rows it means data is stored in the heap without a specifying an order and hence the data order cannot be predicted in advance it also means when you need sorted data you must use order by clause all the time although there is no cluster index on a heap you can create one or more non cluster indexes to optimize read from heap from the heap table a heap table can be used as a staging table for large on order insert operation because the data is inserted into heap table without enforcing a strict order the insert operation is usually faster than equivalent insert into a cluster table or index subsequently when you want to read data from a heap table after the initial insert to process it into a final destination table it may be useful for to create a narrow non cluster index that covers the search predicate used by your query when you create a cluster index on a table in which data rows are get sorted and stored based on their key values or columns included in index definition as you can imagine the data can only be sorted in one way you can have only one cluster index index per table and in this case the table is called as cluster table in case of non cluster index unlike sorted data rows with cluster index index key values are sorted separately from data rows and stored there this index contains non cluster index key values and each key value entry has a pointer to corresponding data row for analytical workload you would typically create cluster table for a small dimension tables and a narrow non cluster index that covers the search predicate used by your read query either on cluster or heap table please note however that the more number of non cluster indexes you will create it will take longer to load data into your table and hence you need to keep the balance between query execution performance and data load performance column store indexes are a standard for storing and querying large data warehousing fact tables column store index typically provides up to 10 times of compression and up to 10 times of query performance in terms of data storage for column store index what if a data that we insert into a table with column store index that data first horizontally gets divided into row row group ideally of 1 million rows per row group size and then for each of the column there is a column segment and for each of the column segment compression gets applied and then the column stores are getting generated and stored as part of the table structure or table data with that let's quickly look at some of the practical examples of using these different types of indexes in the first part of this demo i'm going to explain how to create table as a heap how to create cluster table and how to create non cluster indexes on uh, any uh, any of those tables either heap or cluster table and then finally uh, when we create a table without a specifying any in index specification uh, how it get create gets created as cluster column store index or cluster column store table to start with let's first create an uh, external table uh, this external table creation is part of sample database provided by microsoft uh, i have included link for installing this sample database in the description you can use it to set up it for you or you can use this script file which i'm going to share it for you to download it and do this hands on by yourself so the first thing that we are going to do is to create this external table Uh, which is going to be kind of reading the data from data lake store on this location so let me first create this table and once the table is created we can go ahead and create internal table so I'm going to use set as a statements or create table as select a statement to create an internal table 
by pulling the data through external table. So in this case, I'm doing select a star from the external table that I just created ever. And I'm creating this table with this name, the name that I've just specified over here. And with with clause, I'm specifying different properties for uh, this table. So in this case, I'm saying distribution is equal to round robin. And I do not have any specification for uh, index type. So in this case, uh, because we do not have anything specified over here, by default, cluster column store index will be created. And let's validate that. I'm going to execute this script and once it gets executed, I can go ahead. So table has been created and then I can go ahead and I can view the, I can, I can run this query on this view for this specific table to look at the metadata about this table. So if I execute this, what you are going to notice here is the table has been created as round robin. This is something that we were expecting it to be. And also you can see that the index has been created as cluster column store index by default, even without we specifying it specifically, right? So this is how we create a table uh, with, with cluster column store index, or we can specifically specify the cluster column store index keyword as part of the with clause. Now let's go ahead and create a hip table. So to do that this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply specify a heap keyword as part of the with clause. So here we have distribution is equal to round robin comma hip. This hip keyword can come even with before a distribution. Either way, it's it's going to work fine. So with that, let me go ahead, select the query and run it. This time it's going to create the table with round robin distribution again. However, the, the table itself will be of type hip. So if you go ahead and look at the metadata again, this time again, you'll say, and um, the table has been created as round robin, but the index type definition is hip. Now in the third example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate this table with cluster index on, on this table. And to do that, again, I have this CTS statement and I have distribution is equal to round robin and I'm saying cluster index and the column on which the cluster index is going to be created. In this case, I have only one column on which the cluster index will be created. You can have multiple column as well. But for now, to keep it simple, I have this one column on which the cluster index will get created. Again, uh, this cluster index definition uh, can be before distribution keyword or it can be after that in both ways. It's all good. Let me go ahead and recreate this table. So table has been created. Now, if I go back and look at the metadata, we will notice that this time the index is cluster. This is cluster row store index that has been created on this table. Now, on a heap table or, or on a cluster table, we can create additional non-cluster index to cover our queries. And to do that, we, we use create non-cluster index command and specify the name of the index. And then we specify the table on which the index will be created. And then we also specify the columns of from that table, which are going to be part of this non cluster index. Again, in this case, to keep it simple, I just created, I'm just going to create a non cluster index on a single column, but you can have multiple column to create non cluster index on that. If I go ahead and execute this command, this is going to create a non cluster index on that table. To query the metadata again about this indexes, there are multiple system views available in SQL pool. Uh, and the very first one that you will be often use will be using a sys.table. So this system views provides the information about all the tables that you are creating uh, in the database. Likewise, there is another system view called system.indexes. This is going to give you all the information about the indexes that has been created uh, in the database. And joining these two will, views will give you 
the list of all the indexes created on that specific table. So what I'm going to do in with this query is I'm going to specify the name of the table to query what all indexes has been created on this table. And if I go ahead and execute this query, it's going to return me two rows. Uh, the first rows the first row is where uh, it has the details about the cluster index which we created while creating the table itself. And then the second row is about the non-cluster index that we created later on that table. So this is how we see uh, to create the tables uh, with, with different types of indexes. Again, by default, cluster column is to index is what gets created on any table that um, we create here. If we have a very small dimension table, we might consider it creating as a cluster uh, table, cluster row store table. And in that case, we need to specifically specify cluster um, uh, cluster index definition here as, as part of the table creation script. With that, let's go back to uh, slides again and learn some more about uh, cluster column store index. Like I said earlier, when we are storing data into cluster column store index table, the data gets first divided horizontally into row group of ideally 1 million rows. You can think of a row group as a group of rows that are compressed into column store format at the same time. Each row group contains one column segment for every column in the table. Each column segment is compressed together and is stored on, on, on the physical media. Row group can be uh, in either of these states. When the, when the state of the row group is open, it means it allows a uh, incoming rows to get stored as part of the row group and data is not compressed at this point of time. When it hit the threshold that has been set for a row group, which is 1 million in this case, the row group is marked as closed. So it doesn't allow accepting, no, uh, accepting new rows to that row group. Then internal processes or when we are re rebuilding the indexes, all these closed row groups are kind of compressed and stored into column store format. When we delete all the, all the rows for a given row group, the status for that row group turns to tombstone. And again, the way we have different system views to query different metadata uh, of the different objects that we are creating in, in uh, SQL poll, to query the information about row group, we have this system views called PDW nodes, column, store, row groups, which provides all the row group information. Likewise, to query all the data related to column store segment, uh, we can we can query this view PDW nodes, column, store segments to query all the metadata about column segment. And as I said earlier, a column segment is a column of data from within the row group, each row group contains one column segment for every column in the table and each column segment is compressed together and stored on physical media. With that, let's look at some practical examples of the, the number of row groups that's getting created when we are loading data into uh, cluster of column store index as well as look at the different column segment that gets created uh, to store the data for a specific column. For part two of this demo, I'm going to create an external table for the fact table so that we have sufficient enough data to demonstrate the number of row groups getting created and the column segment within those row group getting created. To do that, let me first create this external table for the fact online sales and to do that i'm going to execute this script as is this external table definition is created next one is i'm going to use seat as a statement create table as select a statement again to create a internal table internal fact table and I'm saying distribution is equal to round robin and cluster column is to index. I'm specifically specifying this here as part of uh, with clause. If I omit this by default, cluster column is to index anyway will be created, but I have specifically specified to make it clear. Again, 
I can have this specification before distribution or after distribution. Uh, either way, it's going to work all fine. With that, let me go ahead and execute this script while it's executing. Just note that it, it can take some time based on the data volume that we are trying to ingest into that internal table as well as the performance level of the database that you have set it for. Performance level determines the number of compute node that's going to be uh, powering your database. And then finally, the resource class. So the account that I've used to connect to SQL pool, what resource class that accounts belongs to? So if it is a small resource class, the amount of resources getting allocated to that account when the account is executing someone, some command is going to be limited. If we have any, any command getting executed which needs more resources, we might have to go to the higher resource class like medium resource class or large resource class or extra large resource class. I'll save that discussion for later, but know that if we need more resources for any type of operation that we are doing. In this case, uh, we are inserting large volume of data and creating cluster column store index. We can leverage the higher resource class for that account to have more resources for execution. So the table is created and as a best practices, ideally we should be creating a statistics uh, upfront for better performance of the query execution. Um, SQL pool allows you to define the parameter uh, for a database to auto create a, a statistics or auto update a statistics, but that's kind of reactive approach. You can take proactive, proactive approach and, de and define it in the, uh, in, in your code itself. Once large volume of data is changing into the table or you are creating a new table address. So with that, let's go to the next query and with next query, what I'm going to do is basically, I'm going to look at what are the total number of rows stored in a given row group, how many row groups are in open state, how many of them are in closed state and how many of them are in compressed, uh, row, compressed state. So you don't need to look at this whole query to understand how this query is working. Anyway, this query is something I'm going to share it as part of uh, the download. And you can get this query from um, official documentation for Synapse SQL uh, pool. Um, the point to note here is that we are querying PDW nodes column store row group system views. So this is the one view that you have to remember or you have to know that if you are looking for some information about row group, this is a system view going to provide that information. And you can do the join of this system view with the rest other um, system view to kind of consolidate the data and, uh, and, and see it together. So in this case, I have this query written and I'm going to pass the name of the table as the fact table that we just created, that internal fact table we just created and see how many row groups are there and what's their status. Let me execute this and this is how it's going to look like. Once query gets executed, you can see this, this is my table and because I didn't declare any define any partitioning on this table by default it's going to be only one partition and this shows the total number number of rows that has been stored in in this table there there are no rows in open row group at this point of time there are no rows in closed row group at this point of time and these are all the rows which has been inserted into table which are there in compressed row group format at this point of time and this is because we just created the table and all the row group are in compressed row group state. The moment I'll start updating, deleting or inserting one or two record, you'll start seeing changes coming into uh, a different um, uh, column that you see over here. So with that, let's go to the next query that I have to show you total number of rows. Let me execute this query and then we'll analyze the result again. So what we see here is for each of the distribution that we have for this table. And as we know, there are 60 distribution. For each of the distribution, there are two row group getting created. 
and one each of this row group has roughly 100,000 rows in it and this is what you see row group 0 1 4 distribution ID 31 that we see over here likewise if we take an example of distribution ID 32 and come here we see that there are again two row groups roughly 100,000 plus rows in each of those rows group and given that we have 60 distribution and each of those distribution are having two, two row group we see that the number of row groups created for this table when we loaded the data is 120 at this point of time. Now let's go to the next query that we have to analyze this metadata and at this point of time what I'm going to do is run this query and then we'll look at the examples. What we see over here is again the name of the table and for each of the column uh, we, we see the number of column segment that has been created. So if you remember um, from the previous query that we saw, there were two row group created on each distribution. And now because we have uh, 60 distribution, there are 120 row group. And for each of the column, there is a column segment getting created. So you can see that for each of the column, there are 120 column segment. So this, this query give, gives us the column segment, uh, segment level information. Now if we go to the next one, this is going to give further detail about the column segment. And what we see over here is, again, for a distribution ID, let's take an example of distribution ID 31. We see that column ID 1, we have segment ID, column segment ID, and the number of rows in that row group from that segment ID is this much, right? And this tells us the amount of the storage that has been used to store the data for that specific column in that column segment. And this, this is on a more granular level to understand for a given row group, we have column segment for each of the column and what's the number of rows that has been stored and for each of the column, how much disk space used uh, for storage of that data. So this is what you can look at by looking at this um, queries. And again, just to reiterate, this all queries are something that I'll provide as part of the download. You, you can find the link uh, of of this download uh, in the description section and you will find this query in official documentation as well. The point to note here is that there are system views to query all the metadata for the objects that we are creating or for the objects or internal objects that SQL pool creates for maintaining the different state and, and different uh, information of, uh, of the table or the data that's getting stored. For example, uh, this is one view, PDW nodes column store segment, which provides the information about column segment of the table. With that, let's go back to um, the slide again and look at how, what happens when we try to update some data into cluster column store table. Cluster column store index or CCI in sort improves read performance, but once data is compressed, it's prohibitively expensive to update it directly. To handle updates, CCI has two different mechanisms. And the very first one is delete beat map. You can think of delete beat map as a, a flag based mapping system, which, which kind of, instead of deleting the row physically in the table itself, when you delete that row, uh, the engines mark that row as soft deleted and engine exclude that row when you are kind of running the query. So basically it's a logical delete against the rows in the column store instead of physical delete. The next mechanism is delta store. A delta store is a row store table that holds rows until the number of rows is large enough to be moved into column store index upon ins data insert into that table. 
The cluster column and store index operates on both the column and store and the delta and store to return the correct query results. However, during a bulk load operation, most of the most of the rows can go directly to the column and store without passing through intermediate delta and store. So, in a sense, rows accumulate in delta store until the number of rows is the maximum number of rows allowed for a row group that is 1 million uh, in this case when a delta store contains maximum number of rows per group sql pool marks the row group as closed and a background process called tuple mover then compresses and moves the row group into column store at that point of time the row group is marked as compressed Once a row group has been closed, it can be converted to column store format based on this two different scenario as an online operation, right? So there is an internal background process called tuple mover, which kind of compresses the data for a row group, row group which is closed already. Or we can use alter index reorganize command on that table uh, as an offline, uh, online operation to um, compress the data in, into a row group. Or we can use an uh, offline operation like alter index rebuild command to rebuild the indexes from the scratch. In case of DML operation on this uh, cluster column store index table, Small inserts are written first to delta store and then when when the delta store has large enough number of rows that gets compressed and written to column store index. So basically in this case there is an intermediate store called delta store which is kind of row store uh, structure uh, to store the data in intermediate phase and then transfer into column store when, when it has a large enough data into that delta store. During the bulk load process, however, because the large volume of data is already coming in in that process, it compresses the data and, and loads into column store um, structure itself. As a threshold, 1 million is the upper cap for number of rows in a, in a row group and uh, it's it's ideally recommended to have 100,000 plus rows in each of the rows group. The, the larger number of rows in a row group, better compression it is going to have. And it's going to have lesser number of uh, uh, metadata information, SQL pool to work on. For delete operation, there are two different scenarios for delete operation as well. For a record which are getting deleted, if it is part of column store index already, in that case, the, the, the record is marked as soft deleted. It's a logical delete against the rows in a column store. Whereas in case of a row which is still in delta store, the delete is a physical delete from the delta store. And SQL engine knows what to exclude based on the log, uh, soft delete that has been marked in the column store and gives you the right state of the data every time that you query it. For update types of scenario, update is considered as delete of an existing row and insert of a new record. And the delete operation is same as what we discussed in the uh, previous part. This is another representation of how the storage of cluster column is to index looks like. So if you see here, we have on the left side rows to load coming in from, from whatever sources that you have. And this rows are getting kind of divided into row groups of ideally 1 million. And then the column segments are getting created for each of the column in that row group. And then for each of the column segment, it's being compressed and stored as column store index. For intermediate data, when you are inserting few number of rows or updating few number of rows or kind of deleting few number of rows, those information are first getting retained to Delta Store. And once the Delta Store has large enough record, it 
it compresses the data and is stored it as a column store index. With that, let's go back and look at some of the examples of how the insert or DML operation are kind of taken care of with cluster column store index. Okay, so now as part of this part three demo, what I'm going to do is we created a table earlier uh, as cluster column store index and we could see that there are two row group created for each of the distribution. So basically there are 120 row group for that table uh, in, in the database. And now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to update all the records in that table and see the impact of those records in terms of the number of rows that we have and their status. So uh, for that, like I have this query, which is going to return me 120 rows of data, each representing each row group. Next, we have this update a statement to update the one of the column in this table without where condition. So it means it's going to update all the data in this table. So what we saw earlier was there were 120 row group with all compressed status and we are going to update all those rows. What's going to be the impact of that is what I'm going to demonstrate it to you, right? So the next query after that is the same query as the previous one, which is going to give us all the uh, row group and the respective status. So let's take all these three query together and run it. So this is query one, query two is update and query three is the same as query one. Let me execute this. It's again going to take some time based on the data that we have in the table. Okay. So we have um, we have this query executed now. Let's look at the result, right? So if we look at the first query that has been returned uh, here, and we see that okay. So now the query has executed, and what we see here is the result set from query one and query two. These two queries are same. But because we have in between another query which updates the uh, data in the table, uh, these two queries are going to return a different number of row group information. So with, with the first query, what we see here is the total number of rows returned is 120 rows. This is what we see. And this is because for each of the distribution, two row groups were created. And because we have 60 distribution, we have 120 row groups before the update. And all of these row groups are in compressed status. That, that is what you see over here in the first query. In the second query, what we see here is the number of records that's getting returned here is 180. And we see that all the 120 row groups, which were earlier in compressed state, has been kind of marked as soft deleted, or basically the logical deleted row. And the new data or new set of data after the update has been put into a new row groups with open row group status. So this is what we see. If we go down on this the result set, you'll see that all those row groups which we had earlier, these are all marked as soft deleted in the database because of the update. And the new set of data after the update has been added here as 60 more row group. And at this point of time, if you see here, the number of rows in a given row group is almost double than the earlier one when we kind of inserting the data. In this case, because the data is in, in the table itself, recreating or kind of updating the data aggregates more number of rows into a row group. So basically, uh, we have 60 row groups with more compressed number of rows in each of the row group. 
one for each distribution unlike the previous case where we had two group for each of the distribution and that's where you see 120 rows coming in over here now we see that all the row groups which were closed earlier those have been marked as soft deleted so those are number of rows which will be excluded from query execution the query engine is going to retrieve all the rows from open row group because that is the rows which contains the most recent data right but these are all in open row group format right in order to compress this data or kind of bring into column store index what we can do is we can go ahead and we can rebuild the index and to do that we can run this command alter index all on the 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 fact table that we have and we say rebuild keyword here if we do that it's going to remove all the sub deleted rows or basically re removes the fragmentation in the table and only going to have rows which are kind of active and compresses the data for open row group once the query, exe query execution has completed we can go back and we can look at the status again for all the row group for this table by using the same query as the previous one and this time you will notice that the number of rows being returned here is 60 and this is because the 60, 60 row group which were created by aggregating the data which were in open state earlier is now in compressed state that is what you can see over here and all the other compressed row group which were marked as soft deleted has been removed from this table so basically all the fragmentation of the table has been removed after rebuild of that index with that let's go back again to the slide deck to kind of uh, look at different scenario where each of this index type will be helpful and learn some of the best practices here are some of the guidelines for choosing right type of indexes for different kind of scenario you should consider using hip table for temporary or a staging table that provides fastest load performance you should consider using cluster index for a smaller dimension table especially if the dimension table is less than uh, 60 million in rows and you should consider using cluster column store index which also happens to be default one for large fact tables or large dimension table it limits scans to the selected columns in the query and given we often select only part of the overall data that we have in the table uh, from the fact table it can eliminate lots of data access during the query execution process again the co optimal compression that it provides that gives query optimizer more power to optimize the query execution however loading data to a cluster column store index is typically slower than loading into the heap table and that's why uh, if, if we have intermediate storage when you are kind of using your ELT process you bring the data from sources land into a staging area and then you are loading that data into uh, De, uh, a fact or dimension table you should consider creating a staging table as heap and your final destination table as cluster column as to index although we have ability to clear, create non cluster indexes but uses sparingly these are optimized for single row lookup kind of scenario however the more non cluster indexes you will add to the table more impact it's going to have on the load performance with that it's time to say goodbye for now until we meet again in the next video thank you for watching please do like subscribe and let me know your feedback or any specific topic you'd like me to cover next in my next video i'm going to talk in detail about table partitioning and how it helps in improving
performance for analytical queries if used prudently. Stay tuned.